All right, hey traders, just a quick heads up. So this video and all these videos, these are my my personal trading journal in a video format. So just give you a heads up, this video is gonna be a little bit longer, but that's just because there's some key things that I needed to go over multiple times for myself because I go back and rewatch these videos uh, for myself. So to give you a heads up, this video may not be for everybody. Uh, you might get like, what is, you know, I, I have a lot to say in this video. Um, but again, it's because it's for my personal video journal and um, I'm just making it public. So I just wanted to give you a heads up before uh, you sit down and watch this thing. Also, there are vi these trades that I take. Um, so multiple trades were taken and uh, a win and two losses. So I go over that and I learned some things from the losses, which is always important right um and so without further ado here's the video all right good morning so i'm looking at oil for model 12 we have tapped into sorry i'll make it just so we're looking at one chart um we've tapped back into this 15 minute order block where there was also um, an area where price responded we've come back to it um, we even came back to it here earlier in the morning and then went up higher come back down again as ICT is taught in the model, it's all about time and price. We are within that time window. We don't have any uh, high impact news or medium impact news coming out today. So um, I don't mind price digging in here, uh, but I'm doing nothing. What I'm waiting for is to see if price will in fact um, provide me the model 12, uh, charter model 12 setup where it's come in, it's tapped in this order block again. I need to see it start to displace higher because we are in the window now where it matters to see what how price reacts and if it can start to displace higher and leave behind a fair value gap then i will look for a long um, if it doesn't and it just keeps going lower um, well then i miss the trade uh, the other thing is looking at like a 15 minute chart you might argue well this was an order block price went lower came in tested it it uh respected um, bodies totally respected the uh, mean threshold of the order block uh, and now it's gone lower so now that it's gone lower um, and price here has retested it that there is also a short opportunity so that being the case i could still look for a short inside of this um fair value gap because again price come up it's tested it's gone lower the question comes down to do it does it leave a fair value gap the hardest thing is figuring out do you want to trade with a bias or do you want to trade with the model um just uh as is because if you look at where we're at right now we this is yesterday's am session i don't know if it's hard to see on the screen but it's highlighted here in this blue um we have dug into more than half of that um we have not taken out the low but this could also be a target because um, from the midnight open, you know, here we actually just have equal highs. So I'm still, I'm still leaning more towards uh, a bullish run, possibly even taking out previous day's high. Um, and we can see start prices come down, starting to respond. But there is no trade unless it leaves behind a fair value gap. So even in a bearish possibility that I was just talking about, you can see there, there, if price is going lower, it's, it's not leaving behind a fair value gap. So. Um, part of this is very, it's a very visual model and you uh, just need to make sure you execute when you see it. So um, I'm going to be looking and I'll do an update if I see something. All right. So gold, first of all, I'm looking at dollar. Dollar is looking strong. So dollar strong, gold should be weakening. And we had this, um, this bearish order block that price came down, tapped it, displacing lower, lower. I'm on a three minute chart on my Ninja Trader, and you can see even on the five minute, there's a really small fair value gap um, right here. But uh, let's look at the actual um, Ninja Trader chart. You can see there's that really small fair value gap. And so that's the first one. So I'm looking to see if I'll get tapped in there. Again, I'm taking a part of the bias off of, well, first of all, if you look at COT data for 
gold, you'll see that the commercials are selling. Um, and, you know, why are they selling? Because higher prices. And so when they unload some of their inventory, I'm sure that is an opportunity for price to go lower. Uh, again, but dollar is really showing the strength. And that is something that um, I don't want to ignore. Here's dollar. You can see from the midnight open, it's just been strengthening. It had a pullback, and now it's uh, showing some more strength. Order submitted. All right, so there we go. I'm triggered in on gold. I have an ATM strategy so that once this thing um, starts moving, hopefully in my direction, it will automatically move my stop loss um, to protect me because, as I mentioned in my previous day's video, um, I started moving my um my profit target around and not letting the atm strategy do its job and so i have rectified that for today and we're gonna wait and see what happens because all i can do is execute the trade control my risk up front i can't make it a winner um, i can definitely make it a loser if i do something stupid and so that uh, the goal is to not do that and try to start eliminating mistakes along the way but um, again, this is it, and I'll continue to provide updates as it goes. One thing that could be a problem is that uh, we have come down into what I previously had thought of as a 15-minute uh, bullish order block that could be supporting price. You can see we are paused in here. Um, but again, all I can do is trade based on the concepts of the trade, this being the order block, we've gone lower. When price came here, it went below this, validating this for the time being as an order block. We went in, retested it, displaced lower. On the five minute, again, not seeing a fair value gap, but there is one on the three minute. You saw the entry, and we'll see where it takes me. Um, as far as profit target, you can see I have it down here at 26.17. And if we look back at it's easier to see it on here 2617 where does that get us that gets us back to um well first of all it doesn't have to go this far my atm strategy is going to start to adjust my position um, but as far as where this thing 2617 if you look at yesterday's um and i'm, I'm putting 4 p.m close because that's when the bond market closes and so i want to start tracking that and seeing what type of uh, information that gets me but you can see um, as far as yesterday's bond market close that's down here at 26.13 and my profit target is 26.17 which gets us back down basically not quite to midnight open um, but I, I find that interesting too because that could line up nicely um, with that with that level um, but again here we are we're in the in the trade and we'll see how this thing pans out I'm just going to let it roll and so I, I'd like to actually capture what is happening and how the ATM strategy is actually controlling the um, the stop loss to help lock in profits um, at break even and then trail it so that I don't uh, incur more more losses than I should, especially if this thing starts to run in a direction where I really should be locking in profits. So. But again, keeping my eye also on that dollar because, uh, you know, I, I'm a little broken record here, but if, if dollar is is strengthening and I get it from here, you know, we, we've just pulled back into this um, fair value gap, which also you can look at this as a breaker because you have this low, high, lower, low. This lines up with this gap. So just want to continue to see dollar strengthen to help support this short in gold. And also taking a look at oil, we came back down into this 15 minute order block. Um, and so what I need to see is I need to see what, so price has come down and tested it. It went up, it didn't take out any highs. Well, I mean, it, it made this little short term high and then it went up and went higher, but as you can see, it's now come back down, tested the order block. And so what I'm looking for is a expansion higher that leaves behind a fair value gap. And if I get one, then I could potentially look for a trade on oil. So, um, you know, I'm in the trade. I marked out three to one on this, and this should um, 
I think the ATM strategy right before I get to three to one should start to move the stop loss. Um, but just being honest, I'm, I don't know why, I guess it's just trading. You don't want to lose, but I'm, I'm feeling a little anxiety. And so I'm going to actually step away from my charts for five minutes. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to touch grass, um, for just a few minutes. Cause first of all, oil is nowhere near getting a setup. I mean, I, I'd have to more or less wait at least 10 minutes for, price action to potentially provide a setup in oil. So I've got time and me staring at this, creating anxiety. I need to remind myself that I have no control of the outcome. I have, all I have control over is my risk. I created this ATM strategy. It's going to handle the trade for me and there's no reason for me to do anything else. So I'm stepping away and I'm going to let this roll. Another thing that I like, and I just want to point this out because I don't know if it's going to play a role or not, but I want to document it. So when I'm sh when I'm showing you the screen here, this is a, a, a mini gold contract, not a micro. And so you can see this three minute fair value gap price comes in, just taps it um, and looks like it could be going lower. Um, and if you look at the micro gold there's that same three minute fair value gap and we did not get into it so that's almost like a little smt divergence between the contracts so um we'll see i'm not saying it's gonna be something but at least uh for the anxiety while i'm in the trade it makes me feel good that it's like oh that that, that could be in my favor um we'll see but again even think about before i move that stop loss um I was working with a four point stop and so I would have got stopped out right there. Um, and so I'm glad that I moved it to a logical spot where yes, I could still get stopped out, but at least it makes sense based on um, what I was seeing in the price action. So let's continue to let it play out. All right. So I got stopped out on that trade. Um, I am though looking at gold also from the perspective that we came back into this um this previous order block um and have now gone higher so even though it seemed like it disrespected it it came down um the fact that all these down candles we've now gone higher than those with this close um it has taken out at least the uh the high of this last uh first one before this real big drop we closed above it we left behind a fair value gap and so since i got stopped out we were still pivoted off of the um the order block and so being that it left behind a fair value gap i have one more entry that i'm looking to get long in um you can see these are the orders i have it one tick above in case it just pops down and gets me in also on this oil trade had a similar situation where price came back down into um, a 15 minute bullish order block. And so since we then went higher and I wrote, I really like in this is that these down candles, um, we went above it here and then this is the fair value gap just beneath that. So, um, I have my, my order in, uh, one tick above the fair value gap. Um, interesting enough, I got, I, I was off by putting my entry in, in the, uh, the the ninja trader platform for apex but on the top step i put it in at 70 and so i got filled on the i got filled on the top step account but i'm hoping that this will uh come down tap me in on my apex accounts and uh see if i can't get uh, a little action on this long all right so why did i cancel that order well because the more i look at price and I look at it from the lens of not what I want it to do, but what is it telling me? Well, this is that 15 minute bearish order block. Look at the difference. This bullish order block didn't hold price. Like it didn't stop it. It went through it. We've come back up into the mean threshold of the bearish order block. And so I feel like this could be a fake out because I'm still looking at dollar and dollar still i mean it's it has strengthened so um it makes sense that this could be a manipulation into this order block and then start to displace lower so um i can begin to look for a 
potential uh, sell if it goes lower, but I'm also getting outside of that window of what ICT teaches, which is its time and price. So if uh, I can't get in in the right time, well then I've got nothing. Going to this chart, you saw me move my stop loss. Well, why is that? Because I'm still trying to perfect, or perfect strong word. I'm trying to figure out how to configure the ATM strategy and so when I look at the price action, there's this little volume imbalance. We've got bearish candle, bearish candle. So these could be acting as order blocks because this price came down, respected this candle, and then it, you know, it ended up going higher. So the pullback, I don't want my stop loss to be so aggressive that I get stopped out because I've moved it too quickly. Um, and so this still even if i get stopped out it's a it's a break even trade which that's fine i'm i'm cool with that but i'm not doing the thing i used to do at least which is like oh, i'm going to move it back down to its original no no we we made some headway i do not want to have a positive trade turn negative so um but this i'm i'm going to probably go back and alter the atm strategy so that once i hit that level i only just i i only move it to break even plus 2 ticks um, as a first starting point, um, but I'll still afford myself. I'm going to have to look at price action and see, like, does it warrant the, the move? Because uh, moving a stop loss too early can can really it can hurt you. Um, the other thing I'll consider is not even moving it to break even, but just reducing it. So on oil, when I first start out, I have a risk of 15 points. When it hits a certain profit level, what I could do is just reduce it in half. So even if it comes back and stops me out. I'm losing half of what I would have lost um, based on the original setup. So, um, but and it continues to let it play out, and we'll see what happens. But I'm I'm glad, you know, ICT says it's all about time and price, and so again, I'm glad I took the time to kind of abandon what I want to see in price action, and I ask myself that question: is what is price action showing me? And what I'm talking about here specifically is gold, and I just, you know, you can see how. We had this, my, you know, my original idea was price came in here, we went lower, we came back in, we tapped it, and then we went lower. This order block was not supporting price. So kind of no surprise that um, within this, I should have considered getting out um, because, well, I shouldn't say because, I it, it played out. I, I, I got in for that first fair value gap. Um, it just pulled back further on me, it could stop me out. So now I'm reassessing, seeing what it's doing. It's coming back up here, I'm gonna see if it goes lower. All right, so I am showing a recording of the oil trade. So this entry worked good, it got me in. So I'm in the trade for both my Apex and my top step accounts. Um, the thing that I'm, that I'm showing here is, and I'm gonna skip through this because it kind of gets crazy, but I'm, I need to work on adjusting the ATM strategy because it's, I think it's, it, while I want to protect my profits, I don't want to be crazy and overly um, aggressive because uh, uh, here I'm going to skip for it and we'll see how this works. Um, and actually, you know what, that you didn't even see it. So I, it just, it here it starts, starts moving and it, I have the frequency set wrong so basically it moves every time there's a tick like a tick of of, of uh profit and that's that's too aggressive i don't want that and you can see unfortunately i didn't get up to this three to one because of the atm strategy it was just re really aggressively moving it and uh i guess that's better than the alternative which is taking a loss which you know that's uh something i've done way too many times but Overall, um, I'm still happy with this. I'm learning how I want to structure the ATM strategy. I'll get that fine-tuned. Um, what I'll probably do is set it up so that every, maybe every three three points of profit, then it will move the, um, the, the stop loss canceled. up um, instead of every, every um, or maybe every, for oil, maybe every five points um, have it move. Um, a certain increment. So anyway, that was uh, a good trade. I'm happy with it. This is the, I copied it across 
um, my accounts. Again, I'm copying um, I'm copying the entry uh, in, in the accounts differently. I'm using some different aggressive um, numbers for other accounts. So I'm copying one account at just a one-to-one -one ratio, the other one at a two-to-one, and then the other one at a three-to-one. So um, it's helping me to just stay focused on the one account I'm executing on, which is just a, um, a, a one micro, whereas the other one will have a two micro and a three micro, and hoping to overall um, speed up the process in those accounts, but without making it obvious that I'm trying to speed it up. So anyway, this one worked out good. The gold trade, uh, let's look back at that to wrap this up. All right, so the gold trade, this is where that first fair value gap came in that I entered short. You could see, oh, no, excuse me, it's right here. <laughs> I was pointing up here. Uh, this is just another one I had noted, but um, this is the first one. Ironically enough, it's also the first fair value gap um, after the New York Open, which ICT has been talking about lately. Um, that's not part of my strategy. I'm just noting that. Um, but so it, you know, it came in, tacked me in, it went down. It actually, so I got in at um, 34 even. It went as low as um, 27.5. So that means I had what um, two and a half plus four, so six, six and a half points of profit that I did not take. I was using a four point stop. Um, so that is something I'm going to also be evaluating with gold. Um, I might need to, I might need to tighten this up a little bit and just use a three point stop and get out, um, at a two to one, or at least start to move my, my take my protective stop after two to one, still aiming for that three to one. Um, but you know, I got stopped out. So you can see, this is the short, this is me getting stopped and, um, that's the thing I think I really want to work on. Anytime that I'm at least like nearly two points of profit, I pretty much either I need to either reduce my risk in half or bring it to break even. So I'm I'll be working on adjusting the um, ATM strategy in my Ninja Trader platform. But let's also look closer at the chart to see other things that I'm looking at currently. All right, so here's gold. Um, this is where I got short. Came into uh, responding off again this 15 minute bearish order block uh, the thing that I'm also keeping track of is that dollar has been strengthening so if dollar is strengthening is why I want to really be looking for shorts um, again depending on how greedy you are this uh, or I am this this would have delivered something um, we made equal lows we did not take out this low we've gone back up to revisit this um, order block and if you've been watching any of these I've Put together i was telling you i was looking at this because we came down through here but the truth is this is not this is not a good order block it did not support price we see price ran all the way through it so i do not want to look for a long but what do we see a return to the bearish order block a high this is almost looking like it could be a 2022 model we have fair value gap here inside of this order block and we're displacing lower so if um if we could get a pullback in Basically, I'm willing to take a trade up till noon because this could be the 1130, 11, 11, 30 reversal. Um, so I like to see these two can the, these these series of candles being the bearish order block within the order block. We've now gone lower, and so this could be a great entry here. So I will look for one more short in gold um, if it will present itself for me. But um, because again, dollars is showing some really good strength, and really I should be still looking for shorts in gold. All right, so price is pulled up into this order block again. What do we do? We took out a high. This could be that perfect 11:30 time reversal. Um, and so we are responding what looks like inside of a higher time frame order block. These three up close candles also make an order block. We've gone lower than those. Fair value gap. This also would be a breaker. And so my stop is. All right, so here is the trade in uh, in my Ninja Trader. Again, is it going to work? I don't know. I like that my stop is above this. This would be a breaker. Um, it meets the criteria as far as time frame. We're still in that tail end of a, a kill zone. Dollar still showing strength. So I'm hoping that this could be um, still 
a push in the right direction that my first trade failed just because price wanted to go back into that order block. Um, and uh, let me switch back to that screen. Again, you can see it here, right? This is just some good. It came back up. It It's accumulating short positions, theoretically. And this could be a good push. We made these equal lows. So I like that as a target. Plus, that gets me the three to one um, if it takes those out. And so that's uh, that looks like, I mean, it, it could it could work. We'll see. Can't count the chickens till they've hatched. Um, I'm going to have to also um, watch this ATM strategy that I have on this in my Ninja Trader to see how aggressive its settings are. I might have to alter those as well. So I'm just going to uh, let this roll. All right. Well, that didn't work. I got stopped out. Um, and that's going to happen sometimes. You're either going to read it wrong or price. I mean, it's a Friday. It maybe just has more damage it wants to do. But uh, when I'm looking at dollar and dollar keeps strengthening, um, and gold should be going lower. And maybe that's also the telltale sign for me. And so um, let's uh, let me drag dollar into this for a moment. Um, and let me zoom this out. Just pull that back up. Where'd you go, dollar? All right. So. If we look at it from the perspective of from from 9:40 or 8, 9 o'clock till 10:15, it was strengthening, and so you see we were wank we were weakening in dollars or uh, gold, excuse me. So that's perfect, right? Um, but then all of a sudden, um, it stalls out, and this is a little pullback, but from 10 o'clock to 11. Gold just turns bullish, and yet we do not have we we have bullishness in dollar. So that's another thing I need to file away is I can want something to happen, but I also have to be very objective and just see what price is doing. And if I'm going to use dollar, if I see dollar going higher and I'm not seeing gold pull back, that is a sign and so that's my takeaway on this trade because the reality is I should have gotten into this long because of that one fact that while dollar was strengthening some more gold should have been going down and it was not and so that really gave a good supportive evidence for this fair value gap here to work that I did not take, and it lines perfectly with ICT's idea of time and price. This is the time it dips into that fair value gap and it goes higher. So it's okay, losses will come. The key is to take the time to analyze the chart afterwards, see what maybe was there that I missed, and do a little bit better next time. All right, so just as a final note to put a bow on this for the week. Um, I've already covered all this, so this, you know, gold should have been showing weakness when dollar was strengthening. It was not, and that should be a telltale sign to me that that broken correlation is like it doesn't care what dollar is doing. And so, um, as we uh, going back to part of even the the original, um, some of the original price action is we had all, the, all these down candles acting as an order block. Once we get higher, what do we do? We come in, we just tap this. There's also fair value gap here. Time of day, that 1130 reversal time, it still pops into this bullish fair value gap and price has gone higher. Um, I just put this on there. I don't know if it's gonna hit or not, but I'm trading with a four point stop in gold. Um, going for a three to one would be at this, uh, up this level here at, uh, 26.49 and a quarter or 0.4. So I just wanted to put it on there to see if it'll actually hit. Um, this also would be a point where I would probably want to move my, since it got so close, I would be moving my stop to uh, break even, um, maybe break even and just like inside of the bottom of this fair value gap. So even if it wants to come down, well, you got all these down candles. So sellers had an opportunity to participate. So I don't know that it even needs to come down here. 
Um, it could. Price can do whatever it wants. But this is uh, just another note for how I can keep certain things straight because it's hard when you're in the moment. If you've watched this video, you've seen me kind of go back and forth. Um, I still feel like overall the logic is sound. I just need to get better at trading it. And this is why you have to stick to a model. I'm sticking to this model. I'm going to fine tune this so I can make the corrections over time and get better at taking the trades that work more often than the ones that don't. So we'll see how this plays out and I'll put a screenshot to near the end of this video to see if it actually would have triggered. So, all right, there we have it. It did hit. So lessons learned. And that's why I make these videos. Um, these are, this is my trade journal. I just share it with the world. Um, I know I haven't traded in a long time, but started out this new series because um, I'm ready to, to commit. So this is my committed model. This is what I'm trading. And over time, you will see me get better at honing my skills of understanding price action within the context of this model. So again, traders, have a great weekend. So traders, I hope that you have had a good trading week. I hope um, that your psychology is good. I hope your trade plan is solid. Um, I hope that you are taking more from the market than it's taking from you. And as always, may the ticks be forever in your favor. Peace out.